Hey guys, welcome back to Ken Cinema Sofa. If it's your first time here, I'm your brother Ken, a missionary of 12 years in Japan. But this channel is all about exploring my other awesome passion, awesome cinema and awesome TV. Let's get to it. This is episode eight of The Haunting of Hill House called Witness Marks. I don't know what that means. Um, all I can say is the last episode went very well. Uh, once again, top-notch, stellar. I'm loving it. And part of the reason that it's stellar is that it is really irking me how the writer is drawing out the suspense of when are they going to just share with each other all the supernatural experiences they've been having. Man, you know? Or at least that's just me. <laughs> I think it was a big breaking point at the end of the last episode. Look, if they try to gloss that over, I am just, I'm gonna come to Mike Flanagan's house, wherever he is right now, and I'm gonna say, good filmmaking, okay? They're milking the suspense, that's okay. He's following the Alfred Hitchcock rule. I got it, I get you. But I like that, you know, finally, the father and Theo saw the ghost at the same time, okay? And I'm fully expecting in this episode that they're gonna bring that out. They're gonna tell the others, I hope so. Cause the dad seemed like at the end of the episode, at the very end, like he was gonna try and smooth it over again or, oh, it, he said it was like that. You know, I guess something fell on the floor. I still don't know what that was. Do you guys know what that was? Was that like a, a something, a collection of, of memories or without further ado, episode eight of The Haunting of Hill House, Witness marks. Let's get it. I've been trying for two years and four months, mm. taking temperature and mucus levels. We've been uh, planning and pacing intercourse. <sighs> planning and pacing intercourse. Okay. Is that a problem? Possibly, possibly not. Is that right. and your Is that Shirley? That very often the genetic testing is. Hey, Shirley. Home. That's the mom. No, I don't want to cancel. Oh, uh, okay. I don't want a, a usage alert. He hasn't used the credit card yet. They're going to send me an alert when he does. Maybe it was the guy who just stole a car to put a needle in his arm. I'm worried about a lot more than that. Suicides can cluster in families, especially twins. If they lose a twin... Is this happening? Are they acting like this because they seriously believe that they have a case of mental illness? like it's genetic or hereditary and they just think that i mean i know that's what they've been saying so far but i just didn't think it would go this far uh, okay let's go we're really not going to tell them what we think exactly i'm going to start using some really strong chemicals down here and it just isn't safe well, i can help with something else then. your mom's going to go to your aunt janet's in a few days i could really use your help watching your brother and your sisters while she's away Man, I feel more comfortable with all these people joining them in the house now. <laughs> of course you're safe with me. Mom! You know, I never bothered to really ask how long ago this was. What is that? Is that a Genesis? Sega Genesis? I wonder if he's going to the house. How's your marriage? <laughs> you're not living at home? And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to ask my son about his life. What's wrong with that? doesn't work that like that. Your mom and I were married 15 years. She used to say she was the kite and I was the line. I mean, she was a creature of the clouds and, and I was a creature of the earth. <laughs> That's true. You know, we separated. You, you didn't know that probably. Briefly, we separated. Came back and knocked on the door. She answered it. She put her arms around me. She kissed me. She forgave me with her eyes. And I'm I mean, loving this. I'm liking this, but I'm just kind of angry. You're on the same team. Anxiety that you're in the middle of a fight. He's gonna get snapped at again by his kids. You guys have fun. Come on, mom, candy. We'll bring her back. So mom's had a very hard day. Would you stop that? <laughs> oh, it's Daredevil, season one. Talk when I get back. How? You'll be back at the hotel. Dang. I just feel it's weird that they would not tell her about what happened in there when they know she's gonna be in there working on this thing all night. And wouldn't you be afraid that your, your sister or your daughter would encounter this thing? I saw the police. 
police reports. The skull cracked like a no, melon. No, it's, 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 uh, Bruises on her upper arms because someone grabbed her pretty hard. Her ankle was twisted, so she was limping. She was bruised to hell. It, so that's why she was limping through the house in the first right episode. There, I, I did miss my mom. I like how they said that right when they came into the light, you know? Poppy Hill. She was Williams. That is a like early she 20th century insane. name. I don't I've never heard or met anyone named Poppy. She was insane. Do you know her? Oh yes. She was just as crazy, just older. I feel like this is one of the rules of you know, haunted stories. Like, don't get involved with items, or cursed items that belong to other people under tragic circumstances, you know? Okay, I thought she was locked out. I was gonna say, please, no. Who is this dude? Now I'm starting to wonder if she had an affair too, like in her past. I know what it looked like last night. You're making out with my husband. No, no, there was no actual... Okay, so for what I can remember, which isn't a lot, actually, he pushed me away. Is this supposed to make this better? You are impossible. Do you know that? Oh, I'm sorry. Have I offended you? I chose to live there to help try and keep you warm. You fucking suck at apologies. No! You do not just get to shove me out of your... Did you just punch me in the boob? <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. Come on now. Ain't no 10 year old kid that fast. They experienced this when they were girls, didn't they? I got a hit. He used the card at a gas station. Amherst is on the way. Yeah, yeah, I, I know where yeah. it is. Right? You guys are going to stay there. We're going to go to Amherst. Yeah, that's what I thought, exactly. Tell them what just happened. Kids no, girl. Come on. What happened. Our family has a disease that's never been treated. The Earth He's having it too. He's going out. through the same things. He saw his sister. Oh, I know I'm never having children uh, because you think that they'll just have the same imaginary sickness. They would. But I have a feeling that's not why he's not going to have kids. Then it could be because if it was medical, I don't think his wife would be angry at him for that. Unless she's just a really terrible person. Unless Bev Keen is back. I made sure. Oh, no. That, oh, what'd you do, man? Can't they undo that unless I've watched too much Seinfeld? Well, if there's one theme I could say in addition to all the trauma and all that, about this show is communication. Yes, so sorry, son. This is beautiful. You did this by yourself. Thought it might cheer you up. Mm. Sure. <laughs> Dad said you've been there. How long are you going to be gone? Not long, honey. I just need a little time away. It's nothing more than that, okay? Love it. That is really nice, especially for a son to do something like that. Mom? <laughs> Now you're gonna listen to me. There's a lot you don't know. Our family is like an unfinished meal to that house because I read your book and you are the last person that should ever step foot in that house because of what you wrote and how you wrote it. I know you saw a ghost. Yeah, chapter 19. You walked by the man repairing the clock and then you saw your mother looking into the twins' rooms. You know what witness marks are. Little marks inside the clock. Scrapes, lines, divots. They're basically evidence of repairs that have been done to the clock. And what are you trying to say? I had that clock evaluated by a professional before we even moved into the house. You hired a slew of workers toward the end. Not for that clock, I did. Uh uh. There was no man there, and certainly not one in old overalls with a handlebar mustache. <laughs> that man was exactly. there. I thought that was weird when they showed that. The camera lingered as it was going by. I never built you kids a treehouse. What? Luke was in there all the time. I'm dinner. I, I... Flipping a house. We were going to be there maybe eight weeks. How would I even have the time to build you kids a goddamn treehouse? Mm -hmm. Your mother, she was not sick. She wasn't crazy. Neither was your sister. Neither is your brother. Neither are you. That was some really good exposition. Oh my God. Man! Hard headed. But that was some really good exposition and not just an exposition dump. It was chilling the way it was laid out and, and acted. I'm not perfect, you know. Well, we know that. Yeah, they know that. Know. Do you know it? I couldn't see him, if that makes any sense. You know what? Never mind. 
You were drunk, and that's supposed to be okay. I'm telling you. Stop. Dang it. Wait a minute, I gotta pause that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I wanna tell you guys something. I was looking for pictures of a thumbnail for one of the episodes, earlier episodes of this show on Google. You know, making my thumbnails, we gotta do that for YouTube. And I actually accidentally came across that image of the sister, you know. And I quickly tried to forget it. Obviously, I must have been successful because I completely forgot about that. And that scared the living daylights out of me. Man, I hope nobody calls the police or anything because people don't make noises like that around here in Japan. Totally redirected me. A total redirection. Got emotional, got into the family trauma again, got me thinking. So, you know, like... Okay, I'll talk more about that at the end. It, if this is what death is, just out there in the darkness, just darkness and numbness, and I wondered if that's what she felt and that's what mom feels. Man, Flanagan again is dealing with this existentialism. That's that's the hallmark, the themes of his of his stories. And then the lights came on, and there he was, and I I didn't see him. I didn't see him. Is any of this so much better than breaking through? <laughs> Put it there, partner. I mean, I, I guess from a, a, a person like that, she's so stiff. That's warmth. That's a warm gesture from her, I guess. But, I, you know, I do kind of got to step into her shoes. If that is what I thought that my sibling was getting it on with my spouse. I don't know, man. You just, your dead sister just shoved her head between you guys arguing. I mean, did she see that? Did she perceive that? Look at this guy. Going out in Banana Republic. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, and that's like the same thing that Nelly saw, right? But you know, that just makes me wonder, like, whatever force there, it, it can't be simply just some people that died a couple generations before. I mean... No. No, buddy. Ah, dang, man. Okay, that's enough Hill House for one night, guys. I'm sorry, look, <laughs> that's enough. Of course, by the time you see this episode, I mean, you know, it'll just feel like a, a weekly addition to my channel, but I'm watching these, you know, two in one night. So I, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's 11.43 right now, p.m. at night in Tokyo. I'm not going to sleep with that being the last thing I watch. This episode is really amping up, guys. I really like, uh, once again, the, like I said, the elements of existentialism that Flanagan brings up. He deals with these in his other series. Well, I've only seen Midnight Mass. I think that Midnight Mass tackled that head on. Uh, by that time that he made that show, he must have grown and matured in his storytelling and tackling of, of uh, certain themes and I feel like by the time that show came out which was my first show of his that I watched he's just really narrowed it down to I feel like he was ready to dive full on into why do we exist why are we here God uh, reality death of course the Christian theology is that the human being the soul was made from the get-go, from back even in Eden, to be eternal, from the very moment that God breathed his, his own spirit into Adam. Everything else that God created, he spoke only, and it came to be. The sun, the stars, uh, the canopy of, of celestial bodies in the sky, the vapor that separates, you know, hev like heaven as in, not spiritual heaven, but the sky and the atmosphere and the earth. Um, all of those things, even animals, God spoke. It was only human beings that he actually used his hands, shaped us from the dust of the earth. That's why Adam, Adama in Hebrew, it means soil of, of the dust. 
Um, and then to make us more than just something that's made from the dust, he breathed his own spirit into us and therefore we were made in God's image. Not necessarily physically in his image, but filled with his spirit and his um, the logos, the word that brings life, filled with uh, you know intellect and made in the image of his morality, capacity for morality, intelligence, artistry, creativity, beauty. Um, and so God made us in his image to live and, and be his children and reign with him forever. It was only sin that came in and destroyed that relationship, you know? And that's why Christians, we believe that Jesus gave his own life to reconnect that cord, that sacred tie with our creator, with our heavenly father, and that human beings can live as his image bearer in a dark world and share the light of God, the knowledge of God. The Bible says that when the whole earth is filled with the knowledge of God, then things like war and death and mis even misunderstandings between humans and this inability to communicate like the Crane family has, all of that will be a thing of the past. So yeah, what Thea, you know, when she, when Theo was going through, you know, that, uh, you know, just panic and, and just spilling out, you know, all her feelings, you know, there on the grass after that scare. The Bible teaches that that is what is waiting. That fear that she had of, of, of feeling nothing and just death, um, that is something that is waiting for those that don't know God. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. Christ has given his life um, and he's resurrected. And the Bible calls him a first fruits of the resurrection, which is to come. The final resurrection, when all those that choose to believe in his sacrifice and choose to be reunited with their God, the Father God, will have a second life, be uh, resurrected again um, from death. And that even death itself in the end, along with Satan, will be thrown into the bottomless pit forever. And humanity in the world to come, the idea of death and, and that, that kind of notion even existed, that'll be a, a storied thing in the world to come that people really wow there was a time where people just they they f stopped functioning so the bible prophesies it'll be a beautiful thing to come but until then and while people still wrestle with this idea of you know being autonomous from god or i being separate from god and i want my own life and i want my own world and yeah, God is like a gentleman. He simply say, you can have that. But if you want a world where I'm not in it and everything that is me, because the Bible is clear that all things, God is not someone that just made the world and walked away from it. Everything, gravity, constellations, the spinning of, of you know, the orbits and, and the paths of the stars around suns, all of those things continue to move and to have their being and operate because God exists. So if you want to live in a world or in a reality where he's not there, then God is willing to graciously give that to you if that's what you really want. He would rather not give that to you, but if that's what you want and you protest and rebel against his uh, absolute providence, then you'll be put in a place where none of that exists. That's quite literally hell. So if that's what you want, a place where God does not exist, then you have to deal with the reality. And I think maybe people are just not considering that, that that kind of place where he doesn't exist, that means that all the processes of life that we even take for granted, from the sun and the precise calculations for planets not to collide with each other or to be the exact perfect ex distance from the sun to give life rather than burning or scorching the earth. All of those perfections and, and fine tuning in creation will be totally non-existent in a place where God does not exist. So that might be what Theo is and, and therefore Mike Flanagan is wrestling with and dealing with and entertaining these thoughts, which I think, you know, fully comes to a head in Midnight Mass. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip, this ride. I really don't want to see it end, 
I, I I'm not gonna talk anymore about that 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 jump scare. Okay, there's nothing else to say. It was ingenious. It was well done. That's probably the the best jump scare out of the whole series, especially because I knew about it by by mistake, right? While doing some research, I knew about it well off and totally forgot about it. Totally. How did that happen? Flanagan, how'd you get me? Come back around for the next episode, guys. God bless you wherever you are in the world. If you like my reaction, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. God bless you.